Hello, and welcome to this video on creating and using the lessons tool in Isaac Sakai, brought to you by the Center for Pedagogical Innovation at Brock University. My name is Jennifer. Welcome. In this video, we're going to touch on four things. The first is how to add lessons to your Sakai site, and then how to add text, images, and videos to a lessons page. You may already be familiar with how to use lessons, and if you are, this video will be a quick refresher. If lessons are something new to you, the value of using them is that they help to organize your Sakai site into manageable chunks for students. On each lesson, you can embed different types of material like text, images, and videos so that students have a complete set of resources in front of them that they can navigate for a particular lesson, week, or lecture that you're going to be presenting to them online. This makes things very easy for students to navigate because everything's all in one place that they need regardless of the type of multimedia source that you're using. So let's get started. So this is a standard Sakai page with a few of the default features included on the left toolbar. The course overview site, site info, and help. We can add lessons to this page by clicking on site info and then the manage tools button in the top horizontal toolbar. When we click on manage tools, we'll be brought to a menu of a variety of tools that we can add to our Sakai site. These are listed in alphabetical order, so you'll find lessons about halfway down. We'll select the lessons tool and then continue on to the bottom of the page and click continue. From here you'll have some customization options about what to call your lessons page. Think about how you want to organize this for the entirety of your course. Do you want to organize your lessons by week? perhaps one lesson for each week of the course, in which case you might want to call this lesson week one. Another option is to organize these by lecture. Perhaps you have two or three lectures a week, so this is going to be lecture 1.1. Another option is to organize these by topics. Perhaps you have a series of topics in the course, maybe these span multiple weeks or multiple lectures, so you can think about calling this topic A or the name of your topic. Be mindful that there's a limit of about 15 characters for the title, so you will need to be brief. Once you're happy with the lesson title, we'll go with lesson one for the purpose of this video, you can scroll down to the bottom and click continue. If you wanted to, you could create multiple lessons at the same time, but for today we're just going to create one lesson page. So let's click continue. Sakai will make sure that this is what you want to do and that you're happy with your decision to create a lesson. And once you are, you can click finish. At that point, the lesson is going to show up in the left-hand toolbar. Your students are able to see the lesson at this point. And when they click on it, or when you click on it at this point, it's just a default screen to help you upload some material to the site. If you're building lessons while the course is already underway, it can be a good idea to hide it from students while you're still designing the material. This way your students aren't in there getting confused as you're adding and taking and changing material as the course is underway. Once you're happy with the content, you can then unhide the page from students so they're able to see it in its finished form. To do this, you're going to click on the cog button here, and then you'll choose the hide this page from users. By clicking on that and then selecting the save button, you will still be able to access the lessons tool, but your students won't be able to see that. And that's denoted by this icon that appears on the lesson. In order to undo it, you just simply go back into the same menu, unclick the hide page option, click on save, and once again the lesson is visible to your class and students. So let's get started with adding text, images, and videos to your lesson page. All content that you can add onto a lessons page will appear right on this screen. So you can think of it almost like a website. Students can scroll down and see all of the information that you've put on there, regardless of the type of multimedia that it is. We can use this tool the Add Content tool to add different types of content. There's a drop down menu here that gives you lots of different options on the types of tools that you can add to your lessons page. Let's get started with text. When you click on the Add Text button, it brings you to a standard text editor screen. You'll be very familiar with this if you've used Microsoft Word or other word processing um, applications before. There's options to bold, italicize, and underline text, justify text in different ways, as well as paste text from different sources, and you'll find that there's um, the option to include a numbered list or bulleted list here as well. 
One of the features that I want to draw your attention to is this format tool. By clicking on the format tool, you'll be brought to an area where you can choose different pre-designed headings. Headings are a really good idea to use as a text option for organizing your information in a Sakai lesson for a couple of reasons. The first is that it makes it very easy for students to navigate the material as they'll be able to determine the hierarchy of the information that you're presenting. The second reason is that screen reader software is able to help students navigate through the page. So if a student is using a screen reader, it'll be easier for them to navigate through the different chunks or content within the text. So let's get started with using uh, adding some text to the page. We'll use heading one, perhaps to give this lesson a title. Perhaps the title of the lesson is Neuron Anatomy and Function. From here, we may have some subheadings that we want to include. Perhaps the first subheading is Neuron Anatomy. And then we'll go back up here and we'll click on the normal paragraph font to include some more information about Neuron Anatomy. And as you can see, this operates just like a normal text editor. You can make changes, you can highlight information, and you can copy and paste the same way that you would normally in Microsoft Word or another text editor. Once you're happy with what you've included, you can click on the Save button, and now it'll appear right on your lessons page. If at any time you wanna make edits to this content, you'll notice that there's an edit box at the top right-hand corner. By clicking on the edit box, it'll bring you back into the editor and you can make additional changes that you didn't already have in the text. Again, clicking on save, and it'll bring you back to the lessons page so you can see what you've created. Let's add another feature. Let's add an image this time. You have a couple of different options on how to add more content to your lessons page. You can use this box again, and what will happen is it'll add the content right below whatever you were just working on. This plus button here will do the same thing. Or if you want to add something above this particular piece of text, you can add this button here and it'll add the information above it. Let's go ahead. We'll try this button this time. We'll click on the plus button and we'll once again see this familiar um, drop down menu where we can pick the different type of content we want to embed on the page. So let's select embed content on page. This allows us to choose a file to upload to the page. So I've saved an image to my desktop that I'd like to upload onto the page. And you'll see that by clicking on the browse option, it brings me right to my desktop. I can pick the image that I'd like to upload. And then I can click on open. And it'll upload the image there. We'll click on save. And the image will automatically be uploaded to my Sakai lessons page. There it is. You're not quite done yet though at this point. You're going to want to edit this image by clicking on the edit button for two reasons. The first one is if you want to change the width or height of the image you can do that here but you definitely will want to add alt text. Alt text is the text that will be read to a student who's using a screen reader software to navigate through the lessons page. So it's important for any images that are essential to the learning in the course that you include alt text that describes the image. So let's include that now. So that's some alternate text that describes the image. What you can do here is you can actually select this particular alt text and if you copy it, you can include it in the item description. The item description will be a caption that appears below the image. This is a good practice as well, as it helps students who are using a screen reader or who are not using a screen reader navigate and understand what the image is better. Once you're happy, you can click on save and the image will be updated. So you'll see now that the caption appears below and if you were using a screen reader software, once it arrived at this image, it would read out the alt text to the student. Let's add some video now to our site. And let's decide that perhaps we want to include this um, below this image. So we'll click on the plus button again, and now we're going to click on add text. I know that seems like an um, interesting choice, but you'll see why in a second. We'll add text, and in this area we have two options. 
we can either add a uh, video from Echo 360, Brock's video streaming platform, or we can choose to add a video from YouTube. Let's start with the YouTube option. So once we have a video that we're happy in with in YouTube that we've found, and we want to share it on our Sakai site, we'll go to the YouTube and click on the share button that appears under the video. From here, we'll select the embed option, and you'll see a code comes up that we can copy using the copy button here. Let me go back into our lessons tool. We'll click on source, and then we'll simply paste that code from YouTube right into the source. We can then click on save, and you'll see now that the YouTube video that we wanted to include appears right into our lessons page. We don't have to have students leave Sakai to go to YouTube. They can watch the video right from here, right in the lessons page. And it has all the same features and functionality that students would normally find in YouTube, such as captioning or changing the playback speed. If you have videos in Echo 360, you can also add them here into your lessons page. Again, we'll click on the plus button, either at the bottom to add it below the last thing that we included on the page, or we can click the plus button to add it above. So in this case, I'm gonna click on this just to show you what it looks like to add information above. So we'll click on the plus button. We'll once again choose add text. And here, instead of using a source feature, we're gonna use this button over here. This is the Echo 360 media button. And it brings you to your Echo 360 site. If you haven't uploaded videos to your Echo 360 site yet, you can contact a member of the CPI's Educational Technologies team at edtech at brocku.ca and they'd be happy to help you navigate that uh, platform. So let's click on the button and that'll bring us into our Echo 360 um, menu of videos. Once we're in here, we can select the video that we want to include. And it'll give us some options about uh, autoplay, auto mute, and link. It's best to leave these as the defaults as this is what will make it most accessible and easy to use for students. We can insert the video now and it'll appear here. It, does, it shows up as an iframe, but don't worry. When you scroll down and click save on the lessons page itself, you'll see that it's been added and students can add, uh, navigate this again just like they would if they were watching the video elsewhere. They can play it right in the lessons page, navigating through it like they normally would. One last feature about the lessons tool is that you, as I mentioned, can edit anything if you wanna go back later and make any changes. If there's anything that you decide you no longer want to include, you can also use the trash can button that appears above each piece of content to delete it. So if you no longer want to include this video, simply click on the trash can button. It'll ask you if you're sure you want to delete this, and you can say yes, and it automatically is removed from the lessons tool. You can also reorder the material that you put on your lessons page using the reorder tool. Here, you just simply drag and drop the tool, the content in the order that you want it to appear in, clicking on save, and it'll reappear in the order that you prefer. At this point, your lessons page is ready for your students to navigate through. If you decide you want to add another lesson to your site, simply go back into Site Info, click on Manage Tools again, and scroll down to the Lessons button. Reselect Lessons, click Continue, and here you can create another lesson. So we'll create Lesson 2, we'll click Continue, Finish, and then you'll see lesson two appears in the left-hand toolbar and you're ready to create another lesson. We hope that you found this video informative. If you require more support or would like more information, please click on the links below this video on the website or visit brocku.ca slash pedagogical dash innovation. To get in touch with a member of the CPI team, you can always email cpi at brocku.ca. Have a great day.